Lesson 2, 1, one variable equations or solving equations. We're going to start with single step equations. So the process of solving an equation is like solving a puzzle. X represents a specific number, but we don't know what number it represents. It's like seeing someone from behind. You know that it's a person, but maybe you don't necessarily know what who it is. So in order to solve for x, we have to undo the things that have been done to x. And undoing means to do the opposite or inverse operation. So for example, x plus 5 means that 5 was added to x, and the opposite operation would be to subtract. x minus 10 means that 10 was subtracted from x, and the opposite operation would be to add. 3x means that x was multiplied by 3. 3x is the same as 3 times x. And the opposite operation would be to divide. x over 4 means that x has been divided by 4. And we write division in the same way we write fractions, but this is not a fraction. This is division. So we want you to start looking at this as division, x divided by 4 instead of x fourths. The opposite operation for division is multiplication. So when we solve the equation, we do these opposite operations. And we do them in the opposite order as the order of operations. So whereas when we're doing order of operations, we would multiply or divide before we would add or subtract. If we have a multi-step equation, we are going to add or subtract before we multiply or divide. So to solve single step equations, if I have x plus 6 equals 15, the first step is to identify the operation to be undone, and that's addition. So then I perform the opposite operation. Now I want to do this here. I take away 6. Those are going to cancel. I also do that here. We want to make sure that we do this to both sides of the equation in order to keep everything balanced. 6 minus 6 is 0, so that leaves me with x, and then 15 minus 6 is 9, so x equals 9. x minus 12 equals 3, 5x is equal to 45, x over 6 is equal to 9, and 2 thirds x is equal to 8. Okay, so we have x minus 12. This is our operation. So we want to perform the opposite operation. The opposite of subtraction is addition, and we want to add 12 to both sides. Negative 12 and positive 12 will cancel. This will leave us with an x on this side of the equal, and then 3 plus 12 is 15. Here I have 5x, so this is multiplication. The opposite operation is division, so I'm going to divide both sides by 5. 5 divided by 5 is 1. They cancel out, basically. That leaves me with x on this side. 45 divided by 5 is 9. x over 6, this is division. The opposite operation of division is multiplication, so I'm going to multiply both sides by 6. The 6 that's being multiplied and the 6 that are being divided will cancel each other out. This will leave me with x, and then 9 times 6 is 54. And then here I have a fraction times a variable. Now there are two ways to solve this. And we'll talk about the second way when we talk about two-step equations. But for right now, we're going to divide both sides. Because this is multiplication, we need to do division. Okay, so let's go over dividing fractions really quick. If I have 2 thirds and I want to divide it by 2 thirds, when we divide fractions, we multiply by the reciprocal, or we copy dot 
flip or keep change flip. So we can keep change flip. or we can copy dot flip. And then we multiply. So when we divide fractions, we multiply by the reciprocal. Keep the first fraction the same, change the division to multiplication, and flip the second fraction. But when I multiply this across, I get 6 over 6, which equals 1. So that cancels out. Okay, so I'm going to multiply both sides by 2 thirds these, I'm sorry, three halves. Oh, see? Messed myself up. Didn't mean to mess you guys up. Always the reciprocal. Okay, these twos will cancel, and these threes will cancel, and that leaves me with an X. Now, we want to look at this fraction times a whole number. There are two ways we can do this. We can either put the fraction over 1, and, or the whole number over 1, turning it into a fraction. We can multiply straight across, 24 over 2, and that equals 12. Or, if this denominator will divide evenly into this whole number, I can divide that first. 2 goes into 8 4 times. Then I can multiply 4 times 3. 4 times 3 is 12. And so that's what I'm going to do here x will equal 12. Okay. Next we have two step equations. So the single step equations took a single step. We do the same thing. We do opposite operations in a specific order. We do one step equations in the previous examples. And that was the problems that we just did that look like this. First step was to identify the operation. Second step was to perform the opposite operation. When we have a two-step equation, we have, it's the same as a one-step equation, but we have an extra step. So the variable had two things done to it instead of just one thing, and we undo both of them. So let's look at this example, 3x plus 5. That means that x was multiplied by 3, and then 5 was added to it. 2x minus 1 means that x was multiplied by 2, and then had 1 subtracted from it. x over 7 plus 9 means that x was divided by 7, and then it had 9 added to it. And 2 thirds x can mean one of two things. Either x was multiplied by 2 thirds, like we talked about in our previous example, or x was multiplied by 2 and then divided by 3, okay, which is often written in this way as well. So 2 thirds x written like this and 2x over 3 written like this are the same thing. They just look a little different. It depends on how you want to look at it. So. Solving the equations, we do the order of operations backwards. So when we do order of operations, we multiply before we add. So when we solve, we're going to add or subtract before we multiply or divide. So add or subtract to undo what is already there. Okay, so we added 5, so we need to subtract 5. Okay, these 5s will cancel leaving us with a 3x equals 17 minus 5, which is 12. Then we multiply or divide to undo what was already there. Well, they multiplied, so we divide. These 3s, 3 times x and divided by 3 will cancel, leaving me with x is equal to 4. Let's try this one. We add or subtract to undo what was already there. They did addition. We'll do subtraction. Leaving me with x over 7 because the 9's will cancel. 31 minus 9 is 22. Then I multiply or divide. They divided, so I'm going to multiply. Those 7's will cancel. 
and x is 154. Okay, the 2 thirds x equals 14. Now, we had 2 thirds x equals 8, and we used it as a one-step equation. Well, we can solve this in two ways, as I mentioned previously, as a one-step problem or as a two-step problem. Okay, first, as a one-step problem, we multiply both sides by the reciprocal, so we flip it over. These twos cancel and those threes cancel, leaving us with x. Okay, we can either do 14 over 1, or we can do 2 into 14 goes 7 times, and 7 times 3 is 21. Or if fractions make you uncomfortable, you can break this up and solve it as a two-step problem. First, we multiply both sides by the denominator. The threes will cancel, and that will leave me with 2x is equal to 42. Then we divide both sides by the numerator. Divide it by 2, divide it by 2, and x is 21. As you can see, we get the same answer. In this one, we don't have to multiply fractions or divide fractions. In this one, we do. So it's a single step when you use the fractions, or it's a two-step if you break the fraction up. So you can solve this either way and still get the same result. Okay, sometimes a fraction can cause a two-step problem to act like a three-step problem. So here we have the fraction and its addition. So we're going to add or subtract to undo. So first I'm going to undo this addition by subtracting. 13 minus 7 is 6. Then I multiply both sides by the denominator if I'm doing this as a three-step problem, and I get that 4x is equal to 30. Then I divide both sides by the numerator, and as you can see, 30 does not divide evenly by 4, but these will both divide by 2. Right, so I can reduce by dividing by 2, and I get 15 halves. Or, I add or subtract to undo, and I get the same result, 4 fifths x is equal to 6, and then I multiply by the reciprocal. And when I do this, since 4 doesn't go evenly into 6, I put the 1, I can cross, reduce, and get 15 halves. matter of preference. Okay, if we have variables on both sides of the equation, well, we didn't see this in module 3, sorry. I made that for another. So we'll, just, we'll just ignore that right there. Okay. We're going to isolate the variable. We need the variable by itself on one side, so we have variable. And then we had number. And we need to follow specific steps to isolate the variable so that we can solve the equation. And the first thing we need to do is to make sure each side of the equation is simplified. Okay, so that means that like terms are combined on each side individually before we move things from one side to the other. So let's look at that. Okay, I have 8x minus 4 is equal to 5x minus 14. So now when I look at this, is there anything I can do to 8x minus 4 to simplify it any further, or is there anything I can do to 5x minus 14? Well, x's and 4's, that, they're not like terms, I can't combine anything. Same as on this side, I can't combine anything. So I first check to see if each side of the equation needs to be simplified and it's already simplified. I can't do anything to it. Next, I relo relocate the variables to the same side of the equation. Now, there are two ways to do this. I can pick it up and move it to the other side and change the sign. This is like the less traditional way. I pick this up and I move it here, and it becomes negative. 
or I can add or subtract it. So I can subtract 5x from both sides because it's positive. Okay. In either case, I'll get the same result. So what I'll do is I can find the variables to simplify. Here I have 8x minus 5x is 3x minus 4 is equal to negative 14. 8x minus 5x, 3x minus 4 is equal to negative 14. As you can see, it's the same result. It's just, do you pick it up and you move it, or do you subtract it or add it? That's a matter of preference, whichever one makes the most sense to you. Then I relocate the constant to the other side. Again, I can do this in two ways. I can either pick it up and move it. So this negative 4, I can pick it up and I can move it over there and change the sign. Now it's positive. Or I can add or subtract it. Because it was subtracting, I'm adding. And in either case, I'm going to combine them to simplify and get that 3x is equal to negative 10. Finally, I multiply or divide to solve for the variable. I do that no matter what on both sides. And 10 does not divide by 3. And since it won't divide or, or reduce, we just leave it as negative 10 thirds. So here are a few more examples that are already simplified on either side. As you can see, we check 3x plus 10, 9x minus 32, simplified, simplified, 8x plus 5, 32x minus 7, these are simplified, 11x minus 19, and 8x minus 10, simplified, 10x plus 5, 8x plus 5, simplified. So I cannot simplify them any further than they are. So now I need to pick up and move. On this side, I'm going to do the pick up and move. On this side, I'm going to do the operations. So add or subtract, multiply, divide, that kind of thing. I'm going to add and subtracting, actually, is the only way to pick up and move things. So I'm going to take this 9x and I'm going to move it over here and I'm going to make it negative. Three x minus nine x is negative six x. Then I'm going to pick up this positive ten and I'm going to move it over here, and I'm going to make it negative. Negative six x is equal to negative forty two, because negative thirty two and negative ten combine to make negative forty two. I'm going to divide both sides by negative six, and x is going to be positive seven. One more example of the picking up and moving. I'm going to take this 8x and I'm going to move it over here. And I'm going to get 11x minus 8x minus 19 is equal to negative 10. Then I'm going to pick up this negative 19 and I'm going to move it over here. Oops. You know what? Scratch that. Hold on one second. Got ahead of myself. Sorry about that. First I have to combine my like terms. So 11x minus 8x is 3x minus 19 is equal to negative 10. Now I can pick it up and move it over. So I have 3x is equal to negative 10 plus 19 was negative here, so it's positive here. That gives me 3x is equal to negative 10 plus 19 is 9. Divide both sides by 3, and I get that x is equal. Now on this side, I'm going to do the adding and subtracting to both sides. So I have 32x and 8x. I'm going to subtract 32x from both sides. Those will cancel. 8 minus 32 is negative 24x plus 5 is equal to negative 7. I'm going to subtract 5 from both sides. Those will cancel, and I get negative 24x is equal to negative 12. Negative 7 and negative 5 give me negative 12. I'm going to divide both sides by negative 24. That will leave me with x on this side. And now I have a fraction. I have a negative over a negative, which is going to make a positive. Those are going to cancel each other out. 
and then 12 and 24 both divide by 12. 12 divided by 12 is 1. 24 divided by 12 is 2. So I'm going to get 1 half. So I reduce by dividing by 12. Here I have 8x and 10x, so I subtract 8x from both sides, giving me 2x plus 5 is equal to 5. I subtract 5 from both sides, giving me 2x is equal to 0. And this is legitimate. Don't think if you get a 0 here, that means you have no solution. 2x equals 0 is legitimate. I divide both sides by 2 x is equal to 0. Now you can divide 0 by any number. This is okay. 0 can be in the numerator. That's okay. 0 cannot be in the denominator. As long as 0 is in the numerator, you're fine. If 0 is in the denominator is when you have an undefined situation. Okay, so this is okay. This is not okay. So when we solve multi-step equations, we put all this stuff together, everything that we've learned thus far, simplifying expressions, solving one and two step equations, solving equations with variables on both sides. And now we're going to have some simplification to do on each side. So first we distribute if necessary. I do have some distribution. So distribution is always the first step. Okay. And we want to do something really quickly. Hold on. If it helps to remember that you have to simplify each side first, take your little highlighter or a marker or something and draw a line so you remember not to cross it until you establish that everything on this side is simplified and everything on this side is simplified. Sometimes that helps. Okay, so on my wall that I won't cross yet, I'm going to distribute if necessary, so 2 times 3x and 2 times negative 4. That gives me 6x minus 8 plus 5. On this side, I have 3 times 6 and 3 times negative 8x. So that gives me 18 minus 3x plus 2x. My next step is going to be collect like terms on each side of the equation, if there are any. So again, if necessary. If necessary means that may not be necessary. It may already have happened. You may not have that situation. Here I have the negative 8 and the positive 5. Those are like terms. So negative 8 plus 5 is negative 3. Here I have the negative 3x and the 2x. Negative 3 plus 2 is negative 1. Okay. I'm going to bring down the equal each time because these sides are still equal to each other. Okay, then I move all the variables, so I can either pick them up and move them, or I can subtract and add them. So I'm going to rewrite this over here to show both versions. Uh, if I pick up and move, actually I can move it over here next to the other x. A 6x plus x is negative, so now it's positive. Minus 3 is equal to 18, or I can add it to both sides. Instead, either way, I combine them. So we should probably write that. Then combine. Left that part out. So I have 7x minus 3 is equal to negative 18. 7x minus 3 is equal to oops, negative 8. No, that's positive 18. Sorry. You gotta be really careful of that because even after you've been doing it for you know a bazillion years, you'll still make sign errors sometimes, copying things down from one line to the next like I just did. So just be aware and be careful that you don't do that. Those are all positive 18s, not negative. Okay, next we need to move all the constants to the other side of the equation. So again, I can pick it up and move it, or I can add it to both sides. I pick it up and move it, I get 7x is equal to 18 plus 3. That's 7x is equal to 21. Same. 18 plus 3 is 21. Then I multiply or divide to solve for x. And 
this case I need to divide and I get that x is equal to 3. So these are the steps for solving any equation. So then combine. Right, so if you have a hard time remembering what you need to do in what order, maybe make yourself a reference card or some note that this is the steps that you want to do this in. Okay, so let's try a couple more. So we have four examples, and I'm going to do the same as I did previously. On this side, I'm going to do the, sorry, this side here. I'm going to do the method where I pick up and move. And on this side, this column, I'm going to do the adding and subtracting rather than the picking up. Um, so what we want to do is we want to review our first step is to distribute. Okay, so I have 8 times 4, 8 times negative 4. 8 times 4 is 32K. 8 times negative 4 is negative 32. Plus 5 is equal to nothing to distribute over here so I'll just rewrite that. My second step is to simplify each side. Okay. Um, here 32k minus 32 plus 5 these two are like terms. Negative 32 plus 5 is negative 27. Over here I can't simplify so I will just rewrite that down. Now, I move my variables, okay, so in this column I'm picking up and, and shifting over, I had positive 5k, so now I have negative 5k, then I can find my like terms, 32 minus 5 is 27, my next step is to move the constant. So that's this negative 27. I'm going to pick it up and move it. And it was negative, so now it's positive. 13 plus 27 is 40. Then I divide both sides. Oh, sorry, that's the last step is to multiply or divide. So I divide both sides by 27, and I get k is equal to 40 over 27, so let's think about this. 40 will divide by 2, and 4, and 5, and 8, and 10. 27 will divide by 3 and 9. They don't have anything in common, so this is not reducible, so my answer remains 40 27. Okay, let's look at Example B, again on this side I'm going to add and subtract, so I check first to distribute. Here I do have some distribution, so negative 11 minus 5a is equal to 6 times 5a is 30a, 6 times 4 is 24. Now I check to see if I can simplify on each side. I have unlike terms on both sides, so I cannot simplify, so now I'm going to move my variable. Wait, sorry, hold on. I'm subtracting and adding on this one, so I'm going to subtract 30a from both sides. Those will cancel. So I have negative 11 minus 35a is equal to 24. Next, I need to move the constant, that's this 11. So I'm going to add 11 to both sides. So I'm going to have negative 35a is equal to 35, then I multiply or divide. So I'm going to divide both sides by 35, and I get a is equal to negative 1. Okay, coming back down now to C, I've got some distribution on both sides. So negative 5 times 4 is negative 20x. Negative 5 times negative 2 is positive 10. Negative 2 times 3 is negative 6. Negative 2 times 6 is negative 12x. I'm going to pick this variable up. Uh, first I check nothing to simplify. So I pick that up and move it. I have negative 20x 
plus 12x plus 10. Negative 20 and positive 12 is negative 8. Plus 10 is equal to negative 6. And I'm going to pick this up and move that over here. And it's now negative. So I have negative 8x is equal to negative 16. Then I divide both sides by negative 8. x is equal to positive 2. Last example, 5 times 2 and 5 times 6, negative 4 times negative 5 and negative 4 times negative 2. I always distribute first. So negative 4 times negative 5 is 20, negative 4 times negative 2 is positive. I have to combine like terms. Eight plus three is eleven. Now I move my variable. So I have negative x plus thirty is equal to twenty. I move my constant. So negative x is equal to negative ten. Now when this happens and you have this negative variable. Just change both signs. We didn't want to know what positive x was. We want to know what, or sorry, we don't want to know what negative x is. We want to know what positive x is. Well, if negative x is equal to negative 10, positive x is equal to positive 10. So we just change both signs. And we have x is equal to 10. Okay, sometimes we have special situations. Um, when you have one variable with no exponent, you have one answer most of the time. But there are special situations where you can have no solutions or you can have multiple solutions. So here are some examples. Okay, so we'll solve it two ways. Again, I'll do the adding, subtracting, or the moving. So first we distribute. Okay, um, if I pick it up and move it, I get 3x minus 3x plus 12 is equal to 12. Or I can subtract 3x from both sides. And in both cases, I'm going to end up with 3x minus 3x takes away all of the x's. Now when that happens, I have 12 equals 12. Yes, that's true. 12 does, in fact, equal 12. And when we solve an equation and we get a true statement, but we have not solved for x, there are no x's left, x is gone, then the answer is that there are infinite solutions. You could plug in any number for x and it would be true. So your answer is all real numbers. You could put the symbol for real numbers or you could say infinite solutions. Okay. Sometimes we'll get another scenario. We'll multiply here and we'll multiply there. Negative x plus 3 is equal to 8x minus 4, 8x plus 3 is equal to 8x minus 4. I pick it up and move it, it becomes negative. Or I can subtract it from both sides. And in either situation, I'm going to get 3 is equal to negative 4. Not likely. Last time I checked, 3 and negative 4 were not the same thing. So when we get a false statement and we have not solved for x, 3 is equal to negative 4 is a false statement. The x's are gone. In this case, there are no solutions. Any value we plug in for x will result in a false statement. So for your answer, you can do this number, which means the empty set, 
which is the same thing as saying no solutions. So either of those would be a legitimate answer. Okay, so an equation can have one solution, no solution, or all solutions. Okay, in one solution we get x equals some number. That's our single solution. If we have no solutions, we get one number equals some other number. This will be a false statement. And if we have all solutions, we'll get some number equals the same number. And this is a true statement. Sorry. Okay, again, no solutions, you can use that symbol. All solutions, you can use that one. And now you are ready to solve equations.